Ayıp Abu Musa Muhammed, Şafet Hüseyin, Tram Bangladeş, Ayıp Asylum Zikar, in Sweden. And I am a big member of RFSL newcomer from last year, April 2012. It is my story. In Bangladesh, we are two friends, Muhammad Ibrahim and me. We got to know each other in 1987 and the two of us got involved in a relationship in 1990. My friend Muhammad Ibrahim later got married because of family pressure but I myself was never married. Still after the marriage our relationship was active and he remained committed to me. Sometime after the marriage his wife heard about our relationship from friends and neighbors. But still nobody could show any evidence about our relation. Muhammad Ibrahim and his wife quarreled a lot with each other because of her suspicion of our relation. On the 19th of March 2011, we got, got together in Muhammad Ibrahim's bedroom as his wife came back early from a visit to her father's house. When his wife saw our sexual relation, I quickly left the place. It was pure luck that I was able to escape from my friend Muhammad Ibrahim's bedroom that day. Now his wife had seen our sexual relation with her own eyes and she was furious. She went out and told about our activities to her family and neighbors. Our relationship was then quickly spread in all of our town and already the next day on the 20th of March, a group of Islamic extremists and Islamic fundamentalists came to my house. They were searching for me and they said they wanted to kill me but they couldn't find me because I was hiding inside the water tank behind our house. When they didn't find me in my house, they threatened my family, my father, mother and my younger brother and they said that they would come again. After they had left my house, I came out from the tank and quickly escaped to another place. Several times Islamic extremists and fundamentalist groups came to my house wanting to kill me, but they didn't manage to find me because I managed to hide myself every time. One day I found out that my friend Muhammad Ibrahim had killed his wife. He had put her body on fire on the 20th of May 2011. She had died a few days later in Sudan Medical Hospital. I became very scared when I found out about this. Shortly after this happened, a very powerful Islamic fundamentalist and extremist group published a fatwa Islamic law against us for the killing. I became very scared to hear this and I am still extremely scared. Bangladesh is the second largest Muslim country in the world. There are, there are a lot of madrasa Islamic schools in Bangladesh. The schools are generally not registered by the authorities. The schools are called Qaumi Madrasa and in these schools you find a lot of students and teachers getting more involved in Islamic extremist activities. I left my town on the 22 May 2011 toward Dhaka city and stayed in my friend Muhammad Poor's house for a long time trying to hide. I was very scared and most of the time I could not sleep because I was getting panic attacks and kept me awake. One day I went out from my house to buy some things but I was unfortunate and two person caught me because they could identify who I was. I, I was very lucky enough because I was able to escape from them by force and God help my friend Nasirul Alam. After that I was living at another place called Uttara in Dhaka city. At the end I managed to escape my country and after a long journey I arrived in Stockholm, Sweden on the 12th of March 2012. I got a negative decision from my migration market.
I'm scared. My life is depending on a positive decision. If they send me back due to the fatwa, I will probably be hanged. Not only the extremist groups make it dangerous, other Islamic groupings and Komi Madrasa schools who exist in the whole country published regularly different types of fatwa and information about people that should be punished. I am one of those that have disclosed my homosexuality in Sweden. As I mentioned earlier, I got a negative decision from my Christian market, which is hard to understand. What is, what is it? Migration market or not me to prove while waiting for a solution. I am trying my best to survive in Sweden. Migration market has given me a lemon card which gives me an opportunity to work and secure my income for a specific period of time to work and to earn money would help me. It would also strengthen my position towards the authorities, but to find a job in Sweden is nearly impossible. Without a social security number, I will never be able to get a bank account. Without a bank account, I will never receive a salary, since employers do not pay salaries in cash. To get a job is in the general, in general nearly impossible. Lastly, but not least, the Swedish language is a barrier. Get any language course, which makes it even more difficult to get into the labor market. I am scared with 61 kroner per day in some from the Swedish authorities. No Swedish language skills, no social security numbers, no bank account, and no job. I am fighting to survive. Above all this, my life is pending on my case. I may be sent back to Bangladesh by our troops are waiting for me to hang me. I was again. What more do you need? Migration market. This program was produced by the Black Square Collective, highlighting the situation of LGBT asylum seekers in Sweden. Asylum seekers from different countries will tell their stories and experiences.
also known as Lita, a woman with transgender background from Russia. All of my identity papers are for someone with a male gender designation and a masculine name, while anatomically, physiologically, and socially, I am a female. And I do behave and I perceive in society as a female, so legally I do not exist. I will repeat. I faced harassment and violence on a daily basis from a general population. I was treated in Havanoi, in the police station, beaten up and urinated on by the police officers. And also, I tried my very best to get my gender really recognized, but the only know about gender recognition seems to be non functional on practice. So I escaped to Sweden and applied for asylum in December 2000. Then, because I fear that the violence I have experienced, officially spearheaded by Russian government, those LGBT people will continue if I return to Russia. And moreover, I am active with the LGBT movement, promoting equality of gender non-conforming people. New Russian legislation enters my interest to the point that I will face huge fines while being completely excluded from daily life have no practical possibility to get out of this quicksand. If I return to Russia, I'll end up in a situation when I can be killed or forced to commit suicide and that will be legally perceived as self-inflicted. But Swedish Migration Board in Rakhonsvang can reject my asylum application. At first, they designated me as a gay male who can live in stealth in Russia and the Migration Court in Malmö uh, confirmed the rejection by saying that I didn't extinguish all possibilities, so to say, to get the legal identity recognized in Russia. And the Supreme Migration Court didn't accept the appeal at all, so as your Court of Human Rights. And recently, uh, my case was. Uh, Restarted due to new circumstances that raised in my case. So on June 26th, I had an interview with the government's American server about these new circumstances. The interview was conducted in English and very glad the moment since I can trust Russian interpreters. Well, I was asked a lot of questions, maybe it's quite a good sign, but I don't trust science anymore. In fact, I'm extremely sick and tired of proving the obvious for almost three years that I am a woman born trans, that I don't exist legally, and that I'm in danger, and basically, since I'm very open about everything, the point of my activism is normalized. Trans people, I already have nothing to lose. But uh, if you think about that, being trans or intersex, it's quite hard. Being trans and intersex refugee is harder, but being trans or intersex refugee refuses protection in one of the most generous countries in the world in all instances. To go through this experience, you should be taught, inhumanely taught. Otherwise, you will not survive, and even worse, this all happened to because of ignorance and internal prejudices, lack of knowledge, and lack of updated uh, country information. So, because of this uh, dehumanizing that I went uh, through in the Swedish sun process, makes me think basically for who are all these uh, human rights? Because, in, in, in this sense, am I counted as human or not? Because it's really not clear whether I could be counted as a human being, basically, or not. Uh, Russia authorities and Russian state should, should be ashamed of how they treated their citizen. I will never stop saying that, I will never stop saying that, but uh, I also hope that the Swedish Migration Board will finally get it, they will finally understand what is it like to be trans in Russia and what dangers are there. And I also hope that the, the treatment of trans people will get better. That's it.
This program was produced by the Black Square Collective, highlighting the situation of LGBT asylum seekers in Sweden. Asylum seekers from different countries will tell their stories and experiences.
second was at PZ. I worked with many artists during my life, both in motherland and abroad. Even here in Sweden I play in a band and play with various people. The country is an occupied country by Russia and it's totally colonized. Nominally, it calls itself democracy, but all elections are Former KGB officers takes all offices, and their policy is the fascism. My country, as its master Russia, is a harsh, homophobic society, brainwashed by Bolsheviks in 100 years and pressured in 1700. I'm an asylum seeker in Sweden. I came with my girlfriend and with my sister. I have no one else. My mother left us when we were 12 and 13 years old. Our father left us some later. We are left to survive ourselves, and we did. I was active in LGBT rights, women's rights, and, and environmental movements from the beginning. Two years ago, I opened it with my girlfriend first club in the country, which was welcoming people with all kinds of identities, a place with zero tolerance for all kinds of discrimination. Black Square Collective, highlighting the situation of LGBT asylum seekers in Sweden. Asylum seekers from different countries will tell their stories and experiences.
December and uh, it's been about seven months. Um, I want to talk a bit about uh, my story and how things got really bad uh, in Pakistan that I had to finally make this decision to leave the country for good. Um, I was actually coming for the Ilka International Conference in December that was held in Stockholm and uh, before that as I saw as a perfect opportunity to launch this initiative in LGBT rights in Pakistan for which I actually have been working for past many years. I've been associated with organizations like RFSL and RFSU for um, five years and I was uh, engaged in um, LGBT rights um, in Pakistan as well as in South Asia. I was sort of preparing myself to a point where I could have something solid and a concrete response to give momentum to this staggering LGBT movement in Pakistan, for which I devised this project named Saga. And I saw it's a perfect opportunity for me to launch a Saga at the point when I was going to Stockholm for Ilga Conference uh, in two weeks, where a lot of donor agencies, international organizations and activists will be there. But I started having this mysterious threat calls. Um, and because of the information that I was posting online was leaked uh, somehow uh, uh, and it reached them and I don't I, I use them in quote unquote because I really don't know who are those forces. I can maybe put blame on the extremist radical elements or the government secretive agencies which are sort of allies and supporting the radical elements is not a, a secret anymore. Uh, and uh, could be some state agencies, I don't know. So, and, and after those disturbing threat calls, there was also an attempt to abduct me and kidnap me. And I know a lot of people in Pakistan who have gone missing, quote unquote, where you don't know where they have gone and where they are because there's already a weak legal system. So, in such situation, where in my last three days in Pakistan were so disturbing. This program was produced by the Black Square Collective, highlighting the situation of LGBT asylum seekers in Sweden. Asylum seekers from different countries will tell their stories and experiences.